wonderful session today with Dr. Valencia Agnew. And um, Dr. Agnew is with the Adolescent and Family Behavioral Health Services. I think I got that title correct. Um, and, and she is a wonderful asset to the Grand Rapids community as a counselor for over 18 years and was named one of the 50 most influential women in West Michigan in 2018. So we are certainly in fantastic company today. Um, I know she will have lots of tidbits uh, to help us recharge in these challenging times that we continue to be going through. Uh, so without further ado, I'd like to hand it over to Dr. Agnew. Morning, thank you. And thank you all for joining us. I am going to start my PowerPoint, share my screen with you. Second here. And Rosie's going to monitor the chat for us. So if you have any questions, I don't mind at all if you interrupt me, you know, if you type it in the chat or if you say something. Just know that um, while I have my screen up, I can only like see little tiny, little tiny screens of you. So, so I won't be able to, to tell very well from reactions like, oh, looks like you have a question or, or necessarily even see if you're trying to say something. So just know that I don't mind if you put something in the chat or if you interrupt me. And, um, I will introduce myself a little or say a little bit more about the practice, but what I wanted to, to find out from you, you know, are you all business owners or um, entrepreneurs in some sort, like what, what's your um, background? What do you do? And folks, you can either unmute yourself or, or go ahead and type it into the chat box, whatever is easiest for you. Yes. So we have Sarah with us today and she is a LLMSW therapist. Okay. Uh, we have Angelita is a business owner and clinician. Carmel is a LPC. Okay. So we, have we have another private practice therapist with us. All right. So it looks like we got some therapists that are probably experiencing a little bit of a emotional drain from 2020 and, you know, 2021 started out interesting so a little bit of emotional drain and in, in taking care of others and that that's helpful for me to know as we go through and talk a little bit so as she said uh about where it's i am from adolescent and family behavioral health services and in may we will have been in business for nine years we now have two locations. Our second location is in Holland, which we opened up in December just before everything closed down in March. That has mostly been sitting there kind of empty up until the past uh, few months. And if you um, want to know more about us, you can find us at our website or you can follow us on Facebook and, and get some information information, um, our practice risk clients that are um, borderline personality, suicidal, like chronic suicidal um, thoughts that self-harm, that's our specialty. We also have a specialty with EMDR and um, each of our therapists have other things that are their specialties, but as a practice, those are our main two and um, marriage family therapy. And, and we do advanced training with DBT so that we can treat high-risk clients. And we require our interns to also do DBT training. So if you have people that you, know, that you come across or that you know in the community that don't have enough insurance, um, 
that you can point them in our direction and know that we have some interns that can help support them as well. And, and then um, Rosie already mentioned some of our awards, but there's a list of our um, BRAG awards. And my daughter likes to say, I don't know if any of you ever saw Game of Thrones uh, where, I don't know, Daenerys, whatever her name is, is they list off her whole um, resume of, you know, queen of the whatever and firstborn and unburnt and whatever and something. So, you know, there's our little, our little blurb. Okay, so we're going to be talking about recharging when you're emotionally drained. And here's the thing, especially with therapists and people who take care of others, business owners, that we can often think that includes me that I don't have time, we don't have time for taking care of ourselves the way that we need to. And if we don't take time to recharge, guess what? We're going to make time for emotional drain. So you got to pick if, if you're going to take care of yourself or, or if you're not, because if you don't, emotional drain is going to show up. And when it shows up, we don't have a choice at that point. And what is emotional drain? When, when you start to think about emotional drain, what are some things Oh, I should also mention, I like interactive presentations. So when you think about emotional drain, what are some things that, that come to mind that you experience when you're emotionally drained or that maybe you see in others when they're emotionally drained? I'll give you a second to either type it in or unmute. Irritability, tired, burnout. I would like to add indecision. I think sometimes it paralyzes mm -hmm. people. And it becomes difficult. I get kind of wiry. I can't sleep. I'm just like up and amped. Mm -hmm. And, and your body still be tired, you know, that you'd be physically tired and you wish you could just fall asleep. So some other things might be detachment that you find yourself starting to like detach and uh, from some things or some people because you're so drained, you don't have the emotional energy to give to things that you maybe could before or, uh, or chronic fatigue, it's just being too tired, constantly tired. No matter how much sleep you get, you still feel tired. Or developing physical symptoms of headaches or stomach aches or back aches or, or other just physical symptoms. Uh, feelings of hopelessness. You know, oh, why am I doing this anyways? You know, when I find myself starting to literally for real go, ugh. It's like, okay, you need to pay attention because you're saying, ugh, about too many things here. Um, lack of motivation, insomnia, not being able to sleep or anger or becoming more tearful. You now someone says, how are you doing? And you want to burst into tears or <laughs> run or pretend like they didn't ask you because if you respond truthfully, it's gonna open up the floodgates. And then um, with emotional drain, trauma is a big contributor to that. What are some other things that contribute to your emotional drain? So not, not just trauma, like we know that that does it, but what else? My little chat box went away, so I can't see if anyone's typing in chat. 
I'm still watching it for you. We haven't had any entries, but I think uh, someone just said being the container for others, taking on too much, being too involved in others' problems. I would add uncertainty. I think that's a, a big one personally. I, I really like that being a container for others. Like that encompasses so much. And and it's like we're as containers for others, it's they see you as a source of strength. And so it's a place for them to dump everything or to come to you to help them, or you're constantly pouring out of your container, but not pouring into yourself or having enough of other people to pour into you. So I might steal that and start saying that, you know, I don't always want to be a container for for others unless they want to pour in some life. Sarah said not communicating um, and then personal life issues as well. Mm -hmm. And again, the past year has has brought up so many life issues. Like life issues happen anyways. And I think on top of those life issues, we've had some more intensity. And, and that is part of the trauma that we have experienced. Like our trauma has been global grief, not just our, our own personal, uh, like people that you may know grief, but just the global grief has been overwhelming. And hearing about death and, and if someone you don't know personally passed, you know someone who knows someone who passed. So just all of the global grief and, and not even being able to grieve the way that we normally would have that then makes it compound grief and drags it out. And, and then with the, the global grief is even some survivor's guilt is experiencing the storm differently. You know, that some people have been in the midst of the storm and, and they lost their jobs, but I get to still have mine. You know, I get to work virtually and see clients. So I have had some times where I felt guilty or felt bad that it's like, man, that person can't go to work. And life is a little bit easier for me because I can still work. And, and in different ways, people have experienced the storm differently. When there was first the lockdown, I was like, woohoo, I get to be at home with everybody and they all have to sit on the couch with me and we're gonna watch TV together for two weeks. Like, yes, this is wonderful. But at that same time, People were dying all around the world. And so there can be levels, just different levels of survivor's guilt that we, we can have. And our global grief has included the pandemic, just the COVID and all that goes along with that. I don't need to rehash that. And racial tensions, those, you know, right in the midst of pandemic being at its highest, racial tensions were at its highest. And, and it's not as though we didn't know there were already some racial issues. And certainly as a person of color, it's not as if I didn't experience racial tension before, but all of a sudden it just was in our face more and bigger. And, and so that contributed to global grief. And when you see people around the world standing up saying something has to change, it just, it, it just became larger. And the financial tensions that people were experiencing, the helplessness, uh, all of those things are, are contribute to our trauma. And, and then the normalized depression and anxiety that if any of you experienced any depression or anxiety before, you know, going through this past year, you maybe started to normalize your depression and anxiety. Like, you know, in the bigger scope of things, it's like, what's depression now? You know, it, it, it just is like, there's so much more happening 
that the depression, you maybe started to treat it like, you know, like it just is an old hat, you know? Yep, there's this cloud that follows me, like the old commercials, eh, whatever. And, and not really pay attention to, but it's still depression, it's still anxiety, and it's still weighing on you. And, and then it takes some life experience or something happens that you realize it's much worse than what you thought because you just normalized it or because you're so emotionally drained. And, and it is possible to be so drained that it's like anxiety. Okay, <laughs> what's new, well, whatever. I'm, I'm too drained to even like, I just, I can't even deal with that right now. So to recharge, it's like, where, when, how, what do we do? Like we need, yeah, we know that we got that. What do we do? Of course, you know, there's always, you know, you can have a spa day if there's a place that is open or that, you know, does a good job with sanitizing that you feel safe. You can have a spa day. You can soak in your own bathtub and, and just kind of soak your cares away. That, that's something that you can do for self-care. Uh, as therapists, the ones that are therapists in here, you know that you can exercise and do some healthy eating. I bought one of those little QB Junior things that's like a uh, like an elliptical, but it just is a small little thing that sits under your desk so you can pedal. You know, it's like, okay, I can pedal and get in some steps in between sessions. And then there's getting some good sleep. I wish, you know, that dog looks like he's really getting some good sleep. I wish my sleep every night looked like that. Um, so those are some things that we can do. But you're probably thinking, yeah, but there has got to be some more than that. There, there just has to be more. I know whenever I hear those things about soaking a bath, have a spa day, eat right, get some exercise. You need to exercise, get some good sleep. It's like, yeah, 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 whatever. Because <laughs> that doesn't feel like it's really cutting it for me. Like I need some more. Like maybe that would have helped in 2019, but now in 2021, emotionally drained, I need some more than a few crumbs on my plate. And it's not that those things don't work and that you, I, I don't want you to walk away and say, Dr. Agnew said, I don't need to exercise because it doesn't help anyways right now. Those things do help. They, they, they do contribute to us being better, but I recognize we need a little bit more. And one of those things is we need to take a break. And, and for me, I um, added this little clip. I don't know if you saw it, have seen Hamilton, but I really loved Hamilton. So any opportunity that I can throw it into something, I always do. And in here, in the, I, I won't play it in the interest of time, but he's, uh, his wife and uh, sister-in-law are trying to get him to take a break. Like you're always writing like a maniac, take a break. And Hamilton did not take a break. They went upstate for the summer, whatever. He didn't take a break. Ended up making some poor choices. You know, I'm like, maybe he was a little emotionally drained from all of his writing, but he ended up making some poor choices, stand behind. He should have taken a break. And sometimes we have to take a break. I'm not talking about isolate, cut people off, withdraw, but sometimes we have to take a break from people or we have to take a break from, from work. You know, if you're working without taking a lunch, sometimes we need to take a break from social media. That depending on who your friends are, it can, it can be more draining than life giving. Taking a break from news, taking a break from technology taking a break from emails. My office, we were just inundated with emails because there's so many of us. And when we started working virtually, our only way to communicate was through, was mostly, that's not our only way, but was mostly through emails. And it ended up being exhausting and we had to do something different. So we try and pick up the phone and call the other one when there's something that we need versus having to see so many um, emails 
and being very protective of your time and how you spend your time, how you're giving up your time. And recharging when, um, when you're emotionally drained, there is a thing in uh, DBT called half smile and willing hands. And half smile is just where, like the Mona Lisa smile, it's not a complete, it's not a grin, like a joker grin. You know, it's not like that. It's just a, a half smile where you turn up your lips just a little bit. And willing hands is when you have your hands open. And that's something that you can practice when you're experiencing something that you don't want to accept or, or that you don't like. And you got to accept it anyways, whether you like it or not, whether we like COVID or not, we have to accept that it's here. Um, if it's maybe a person that annoys you, that you just have half smile and willing hands. So I want to give you just a second or a minute here to think about something that maybe you're having a hard time accepting and just you can have your hands on your lap and and a half smile and and just have some positive thoughts so for example maybe it is a person that is annoying and you just half smile hands open willing hands of i can handle this no well, i'm okay or even wishing well for that person because that starts to release some of the, the pressure, the stress that you might have. It's just, yeah, I hope her day goes well. So that's something that you can, you can just start to practice. You can practice if you're in the grocery store and maybe People are standing too close to you or something and, and, and it bugs you and you can, you know, maybe you could move away from them or say, yeah, you know, six feet, please, whatever that might be. But also just being able to have a half smile and willing hands. Rosie mentioned, you said decisions, making decisions of just a half smile and open hands of Oh, deep breath decisions. I have some decisions I got to make today. I'm going to make some decisions. Having the choice to make decisions is a positive all by itself. You know, I get to make some decisions and, and just willing hands makes you more receptive to it. Also, during the, um, this is what we used to look like pre-pandemic. You know, we're with our friends and family and we're all close. And we could have hugs and touches and be in the same space and not worry about it. And after the pandemic, this is what we look like. It's all virtual and, and we pretty much want to have on hazmat suits. You know, we might not all have on hazmat suits, but some people did, especially some that worked in the hospital. But one of the things that you can do to help when you're emotionally drained is to stay or get connected. You can get connected and use Zoom and you may be sick of Zoom, but when you get on Zoom and you do some fun things, I'm part of a woman's group that we have played Family Feud online, we've done Fishbowl, we've done Two Truths and a Lie, and learned all kinds of stuff about the women that I did not know before and perhaps did not want to know, you know, that it was just hilarious that the things that, that we learned in the Two Truths and a Lie, and it made being on Zoom uh, more exciting but also remembering that Zoom can be tiring, so you have to be picky about what, what you do and, and uh, how you spend your time. 
but stay connected. It is important to be connected. Um, the I, I won't go to the the cam just because because of uh, time, but you can and and you can copy down that link of the San Diego Zoo has webcams in several of their uh, animal areas with the penguins and the giraffes and the hippos and and sometimes you just might need some downtime and you can't hop on the plane and go to San Diego and while you're there see the zoo but you can there's different places that you can tour online and even on our uh, website and resources during the pandemic we have a list of places that have webcams and this is just a fun one that I like to do with my son and and have fun doing things that are nurturing versus depleting activities and when you're a therapist even though I absolutely love what I do I I love what I do. I feel like I have the best job in the whole world and I don't care who else thinks they have a better job. They don't, I have the best job. But it can also be depleting at times and being a container for people, there are some benefits and joys to being a container, but there is a point when being a container feels overwhelming and exhausting and you just, you know, you see someone coming and you wanna grab your container and run and you know pretend like you don't see them because <laughs> you see them coming from a distance so you got to have some balance of some things that are nurturing for you uh, some fun things that you like to do can are there any examples because your examples might help each other what are some some fun things I love hanging out with my grandkids. The things that they say absolutely crack me up. This past weekend, um, I was taking care of them while their parents were gone. And I told them, you need to use the um, disposable dishes because grandma's not washing any dishes. I'm not doing the dishes. And the oldest said, grandma, you don't have to worry about that. My parents do the dishes, just leave them there. They'll do them. And it's like, well, gosh, they might not want to come home to a bunch of dishes. He goes, all they do is put them in the dishwasher and then we put them away. And the middle one says, well, I put away the silverware. And the two-year-old says, and I give snuggles. And that just cracked me up. It's like, in other words, you do nothing. You, do, <laughs> you give the snuggles. So I like hanging out with them because they always say something that, that makes me laugh and takes me out of my head or myself. What do you all do that is fun, that's nurturing? I need physical for my nurturing. Um, can you guys hear me okay? And what was that? Yeah, okay. Um, I just wanted to make sure you hear, heard me. I cut my microphone off so I didn't get the feedback in my ears, but I need physical. So um, in the past, like, six months uh they have all these youtube videos of all these dances like the beyonce dance and this and that so i turn that on and i learn those dances and i'll turn them on you know occasionally and do those dances and show my son or he'll show me and tell me what i'm doing wrong with the dance but i learn the dances because it just feels good the music is in the soul and i'm moving around so I have considered doing that, learning some of the dances, and 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 then I thought, yeah, it's probably just better for everybody if I don't injure myself. <laughs> Anna said, "Family time and dancing works for me." Okay. My family's a little bit spread out, and so we did we did theme dinner parties uh, a couple of times over last summer. We did them on Zoom, and so everyone had their own setup, and everyone's kitchen was decorated a little bit differently. But that was a really fun way for us to connect when when we couldn't be in person. 
Sarah says, Marco Poloing with friends from far away. Yeah, so we, we can come up with creative ideas. And the more we, sh we stay connected and we share those ideas with others, you know, the more fun it can be. Because like even the, the dancing, you know, I'll do my own dance, but I'm like learning some new dance, like just forget it. But <laughs> doing dancing with a group of friends and one time just our, our group of women they did uh, karaoke and, you know, we're all dancing and, and I've been trying to be healthier exercise. And, and I attend a church where we're demonstrative, where it's like praise and worship. So, you know, it's like, woo, yeah. <laughs> and that, that's nurturing for me. That replenishes, that, that feeds me. And then you can avoid multitasking. Oh my gosh, multitasking. I, I'm guessing, um, you know, I have a little poll in here that I wanna do with you because my guess is, is that all of us multitask at some point in some way. And one of the ways that we can avoid emotional drain is to stop multitasking, to just be mindful, be present, be in the moment, be intentional, and, and do one thing at a time. So I want to have you, if you're able, can you go to this link up here, the poll EV, which is for polleverywhere.com and then type in Valencia Agnew, well, without the W, so almost Valencia Agnew, 874 and answer those questions that are in the poll. And if you need to um, close out your screen to be able to do it, that's fine. I did just type it into the chat box too. So if that's easier for people to copy and paste out of there, I think that should work. Thank you. We can see the little, little green line going across letting snow how many and how far along you are. Funny thing is, is we think that multitasking means we can get more done when the truth of the matter is, is we don't. And it's draining. So I'm gonna start looking at some of the answers while you're doing this so it can see them. Um, I eat while watching TV so far. Everyone said, yes, I do that. So you're not just being mindful of your meal, just sitting there savoring the flavors and the taste. Oh no, we're eating and watching TV. And maybe even you miss some of the things that are on the TV because you looked down and later in the movie, you're like, well, what happened? When did they show that? Oh, that was when you were eating. Uh, 
Um, I read while watching TV. The majority of you said, no, you don't. But some said yes. And I definitely have been someone that has read while I'm watching TV. I've done schoolwork, sitting there reading my book and looking up at the TV as though I could effectively do both at the same time. And then wonder why I feel a little drained. Um, I do chores while watching TV. The majority of you said yes. And with being able to stream things on my laptop, <laughs> that means that I can bring it in the kitchen while I'm doing some cleaning and watch something at the same time. But some of you said, no, you don't. I'm going to get better at that because I don't want to be so drained that I'm, you know, I'm burned out. Because that's a little, that's a little bit different. Um, I do projects around the house or things like crafts while watching TV. Looks like the majority of you do. That you find something else that you're doing while you're watching TV. Or I do work while watching TV. And the majority said no, and some said yes. I consistently do my notes, mostly, while I'm watching TV. I've gotten a little bit better because 2020 was a little bit draining or a lot draining. And, and I feel like I, I would like to tell you that I did it because it was, I knew that and I just didn't do it from the beginning because I shouldn't do that for my own health sake. But really, I stopped doing it because doing sessions from home and Zoom from home and notes and trying to figure out a space that I just became so emotionally drained that it's like I'm too tired. I'm chronically tired. I cannot do my notes while I'm watching TV anymore. And so I've decided to stop doing my notes and I mostly don't do notes or work while watching TV. Um, I do nothing else when watching TV. And some people said, yes, that is true. I don't do anything else when watching TV. I probably need to like connect with you and have you give me speeches and hold me accountable for doing one thing at a time, at least when I'm watching TV. And for those who said no, to hold them accountable as well. I sleep while supposedly watching TV. Some said yes and some said no. I, I will admit that sometimes, you know what, I fall asleep when watching TV as well. My daughter will say, well, you have assumed the position, so I know you're going to be asleep shortly. And it's like, no, 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 I'm watching it. <laughs> I'm on my phone or tablet while watching TV. <laughs> the majority of you said yes. And I do something physical like exercising. And I just want to say, even with that little QB Jr. in one of their little videos, they're like, you can watch TV and get in exercise. And gyms have TVs in front of you so that you can be on the treadmill and, and um, do something physical. And I'm usually doing something while watching TV, the majority of you said yes. So takeaway, I'm wondering what's your takeaway? Just seeing all of the yes and no's, what stands out for me, for you about multitasking? And I just chose TV. We could to so many different areas of life. <laughs> What did, what came up for you? What did you think, notice, observe?
Sarah noted that she feels like she can't afford to not multitask. And that's such a trap for us. Sometimes we pick up food and eat it in the car while we're driving from one place to another. You know, all the, the things that we think that we can't, but when you're so emotionally drained that you are struggling to do the things that you love or be there for the people that you want to be there for, including yourself, it's like we pay a price. So we think that we can't. And, and I thought that I couldn't not do my notes when I'm watching TV because I just don't have time. But as I started to get emotionally drained, I realized I can't even do my notes in an effective way. The way that I would want my notes to look. When they started looking like saw Billy, he was depressed. We did CBT. <laughs> Next. He, I gave him some homework. It's like, um, you know, those aren't even good notes, but I'm too exhausted to type anything more than that. And so then I start becoming ineffective in other, other ways. You start to see it spilling over in other areas of your life. So, so it does. It's such a trap to feel like we can't afford to not multitask versus being mindful and being present in one thing. Carmel shared that uh, they think it will be hard to change the habit. Uh, I assume the habit of multitasking. Uh, Anna says, I've gotten better mm -hmm. at being present and in the moment. Uh, Samika, I am not focused. I'm not focused, but I feel like I'm not getting work done if I don't multitask. And so it, it's hard and it is, you know, I don't want to pretend like it's not hard to multitask. It absolutely, I went to the dentist the other day and I'm sitting there and I started reading a magazine. It's like, oh my gosh, I, I don't have time to read this magazine. Let me get my phone out. I can check my emails. <laughs> I can maybe respond to a couple of emails. And even when they took me back and... They're like, you know, we're gonna numb your mouth for a little bit. I'm like, well, let me grab my phone because I'm not just gonna lay here when I could be doing something else too. And, and I have to very consciously keep reminding myself that we just come out of a year that just took and it took and it took and it took. And, and yeah, maybe there were some blessings and some things that were wonderful in the year. So I don't want to make it sound like nothing good happened to me in the year, but it was a year that, that mostly was draining. And, and if I don't want to be spent completely, then I realize it's like, but I have to, I have to for my sanity's sake. And, and I hope that you will remember that you're worth taking the time for. You are worth not multitasking and it may seem like it will cost you more, but if you don't take care of yourself, if you don't do it, emotional drain will show up whether you want it to or not. And, and it will end up being a price that we have to pay. And, and I feel like it's too great a price. So it's, so we pick and choose. And, and it doesn't mean that you're going to take everything in this and say, oh, I'm going to start doing all of these things. Probably not. And I won't do all of these things either. Because I'm not going for a spa day where like you go soak in a tub somewhere. Not going to happen. But there are some other things that, that I do. And then using prayer and meditation is, is something that you can do. For the therapist, um, Headspace offers a discount for you to get the like all the bells and whistles and not just the free packages. So for those of you that pray or um, if you don't, you can um, meditate that it just 
sitting, being mindful, doing some anxiety type of mindfulness apps. There's Headspace, there's Calm. There's a bazillion of them out there that you can just set aside a couple of minutes, five minutes. I, I'd like to say 10 minutes, but I feel like I'll be a little bit hypocritical telling you 10 minutes because it's very seldom that I will do a 10 minute mindfulness because I feel like I have other things that I need to do, but I will do a five minute or I will just take a minute to and look out the window and notice what's out there. And then self-compassion. You um, probably can practice self-compassion for others, but what about yourself? Self-compassion, um, I'd like you to just take a couple of minutes right now and think about a friend coming to you who's telling you they're emotionally drained. And they're telling you that their year looked a lot like your year. So they're telling you a story that looks like yours and they're telling you how, you're, how um, they're feeling. So I'd like you to just imagine for a minute what you would say to that friend, what you would say to that client. What would you say to that family member? What would you say to your child, to your sibling? And imagine it. What does your tone of voice sound like? What does your body language look like as you're talking to them? Would you put a hand on their shoulder? Notice the words that you use with that person. Maybe that person's talking to you about being tired of being a container, tired of having decisions to make every day, tired of giving, but not getting as much in return. So what did you notice about your tone of voice with that person? Someone share what you noticed about your tone of voice, your body language, or the things that you said. Carmel said soft and caring, gentle. Notice how even us experiencing some emotional drain ourselves, that you can still imagine yourself being soft and gentle. Non-judgmental was shared. Mm -hmm. So to help with your emotion, emotional drain, I want to encourage you to do that for yourself. The same way that you would be with someone else, be that for you. And I chose this picture of the woman with her hand on herself because touch is important. And we release oxytocin when we um, have touch. And you can just put your hand over your heart and, and say those things to yourself the way that you would to someone else. You can cup your face and just hold your face in a loving, gentle way. 
and say those things to yourself and be non-judgmental. Because I can imagine, you know, if you're like me, I might be judgmental with myself and say, oh, you're just not doing this, um, doing this very well. You, you tell everybody else not to multitask. Well, why are you like eating and watching TV? But that's judgmental versus if it were a friend, I might, I probably would be saying, you know, you're doing the best that you can and you need to do better. Or, you know what, it's okay to, to eat sometimes when you're watching TV. Something gentle, something with self-compassion. So I encourage you to be self-compassionate to help with emotional drain. And adding a touch is like icing on the cake. And remove your focus from your to-do list because that makes us want to multitask of all the things I got to do, I got to do, I got to get this done. I want to encourage you to celebrate what you've already accomplished. Celebrate that you made it through 2020. Celebrate that, you know, you still want to be a therapist. Celebrate that you got up and got dressed this morning. Celebrate the time that you don't multitask, the behaviors you want to see repeated, celebrate that. Celebrate that you are, you learn Beyonce's moves and tell your friends on Facebook or whatever, like, whoa, guess what? You know, I came out of the pandemic with some dance moves. What did you come out with? You know, that you celebrate what you have accomplished, change your focus. Why are you changing your focus? Because you don't want to be emotionally drained. And then be deliberate and intentional. I can't emphasize enough, have someone else that you can talk to, somebody that you can trust, that you can just tell, you know what, I am not doing well right now, or I am so emotionally drained, you know, so that those people can check in on you so that they can hold you accountable. You know, I have a few friends that will hold me accountable about going to bed and some of my coworkers about, don't be sending emails at one o'clock in the morning because they're gonna call me out on it. So I know not to send them emails at one because I don't want to be challenged on that. I, I might still want to, but I'm not going to because I don't wanna hear it. So, so have someone in, and have a few people if you can, because we're all trying to not be emotionally drained so that you don't have one person that feels like it, it's all their responsibility, but it can be a friend that will send you a text periodically that's just something funny or that makes you laugh. Maybe it's a little irreverent what they send you, but the two of you can laugh about it. Um, find other, if you're, you are in your own practice or you own your own business, find other business owners that you can vent to that, that get it, that can understand and that you can, I say not just a safe space, but a brave space. If any of you know Enid Gaddis, I like giving her credit for telling me about having a brave space and a brave space means that you are authentic and that you can say something knowing that it might be hard for someone else to hear that maybe you share with your friend and your friend might say, you know what, Rosa, you need to get it together, that they're not just going to um, go along with it. They're going to tell you, I'm coming to pick you up and here's what we're going to do. Uh, or that can just hear you say, I hate everybody. And they not think, oh, she needs to be hospitalized. She's not doing okay. That it's just, it's just you having a safe, brave space to vent. So be deliberate and intentional and have a few people that you can ask for help. That goes a long way, having someone that you can ask. I have three friends right now that are my check-in on me and just speak words of life that encourage me, that say, you got this. That's like, oh yeah, that's right. I do. I got this. 
and let go of mistakes. You know, this is my um, like brag proud mom moment because number 23 is my son and he used to play for the Dallas Cowboys and I've learned so many lessons from him playing football. But one of them that he would talk about is that sometimes you make mistakes on the field and you got to leave it there. Every snap, every single snap, you leave that play on the field because the next play is coming up. And, and sometimes we're hard on ourselves and that is emotionally draining is that we have to let go of mistakes, every snap, everyone, leave it on the field because the next play is coming up. The next client is coming in the door. you got another decision that you have to make. I'm not saying you don't learn from mistakes. You learn from them, but you let them go versus, well, I wish I had said that. Oh my gosh, what if that wasn't the right decision? Oh, well, maybe. And then the next thing you know, you're so drained. You can't even go forward with the next one. Everything else seems huge. So leave it on the field every snap. And then seek professional services if you need to. For the therapist here, I, I'm all about having um, a therapist. I, I personally, I think the best therapists have therapists. I have my therapist. I tried to convince him that I needed two sessions a week. He's like, you really don't. <laughs> it's like, but I really want to have two sessions a week. You're not getting two sessions a week. <laughs> Forget it. So, you know, he's going to go on vacation. It's like, fine, I guess I'll let you go on vacation if you must. And, and so don't be afraid to seek professional services, whether that's medical or whether it's counselors. And, and I sh shamelessly have a picture of all of our therapists up. I'm all about diversity and uh, being able to provide services for those that need it. And that doesn't mean you have to come to our practice, but you can go somewhere to have professional services and do it without shame. Take care of yourself so that you're not emotionally drained. Yes, it benefits all the people around you, but this isn't for the people around you. I don't do my counseling so that I can be a better counselor. I'm doing it so that I can be a better me, so that I can be good, so that I can feel good, so that, so that I can get the most out of life. And, and you can do that for you. If you don't make time, for the steps to help you recharge, then you will make time for emotional drain. So if you don't take time, don't be surprised when you feel detachment, chronic fatigue, physical symptoms, hopelessness, lack of motivation, insomnia, anger, and tearfulness. Because emotional drain can start to look like depression. It's not depression, but it can start to look like depression and can become depression. And that is it. I hope that, let me see, I'm two minutes over. So um, if there's any questions, I, I do, I can hang around. I don't know, Rosie, if that's okay. Sure, um, I think yeah. that'd be great if we just want to hang around for another minute or two. And if there's any questions, if, if anyone wants to unmute themselves or, or type something in the chat box, um, I think this is a great opportunity Dr. Agnew, thank you for all of that information. I know I'll speak for myself, but I know uh, I'm sure many others echo it, that that was just what we needed today. A uh, little bit of encouragement, a little bit of a, a reminder that it's okay, that things are hard, but little, little steps, you know, maybe putting down the book while we're listening to the TV or maybe trying not to do all the things at one time. Um, certainly a reminder for me as I have different screens and notes and calendars and everything. So I certainly took a lot away from it. Are there any questions or anyone wants to, to share anything? Yeah, Let me check the chat. Some tips that, that you just want to share. So please feel welcome to share any tips too. I saw a question come through whether the recording will be sent out. Yes, I will send it to all participants and then it will live on Grow's YouTube page.
Well, thank you everyone for joining. And I hope that I said something that you can take away and that you can use and apply immediately so that you won't be emotionally drained. Because I think we all rock. And the more we take care of ourselves, the more we rock and the more, and the more we give others permission to take care of themselves, which ultimately, as I said, I'm gonna steal the container, which ultimately means I don't have as many people wanting to pour stuff into my container if you know we're we're helping each other and this is a time in history where we definitely have to help each other like we're we're in it together in different ways that we support each other so thank you absolutely and thank you thank you to everyone who joined us and dr agnew again thank you for your time your wisdom and and just being there to to support all of us so thank you you're welcome <laughs>